Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm here today to talk to you about radioactive uh, check sources, radioactive objects and things, and give you some idea as to the risk of them. Because I'm so sick to death of people saying, oh my god, you're going to get cancer by tomorrow. Oh my god, you'll have, you, it, it'll build up in you and you're going to get radiation poisoning and radiation sickness and all this other crap that's completely not true. So let me try to explain this to you and back up my statement that it's not true with actual science and facts. Because, well, facts and science are much more important than just making claims. Let's start out with this. This is a cesium-137 sample. Um, it's exactly, uh, well, it's not exactly, it's approximately one microcurie, which is 37 kilobecquerels, plus or minus like about 20%. Um, if we flip this guy over, and I have it against here because I'm trying to um, get a, a dose reading on it, you're gonna, you'll are gonna, you notice, oops, let me cut the light on if you can see it, that we're at about 7.7 .7 to 7.8, let's call it, if you like, 8 microsieverts per hour, okay? And that's on contact. It goes up and down a little bit. And there it goes. Well, hold on, it's going up a little bit. See if it goes up any higher. Any higher? No. Okay, make make it 8.6. This unit is calibrated for cesium-137. That's the reason that we can use this in dose mode. Um, other than cesium-137, like the other samples I have here, uh, we would want to just be using counts per second or counts per minute. If we switch to counts per second, you'll see that we're looking at around 47 counts per second, right? Plus or minus about 47 counts per second. All right. Now, this is under 10 microsieverts per hour. You'll find that almost all of my samples, let's get rid of this, all my samples come out about the same rate. The storiated camera lens, gamma only, is hotter. It is inappropriate to use dose rating on it, but I'm going to turn it on anyway. Even though the number that you're seeing is not very accurate anymore. But I wanted you just to see that it wasn't going on to like the hundreds of microsieverts or anything like that, okay? I just wanted to make sure you saw that, even though it's not, it's, I mean, the plus and minus in this is probably like 30% at this point, but still, that's not a bit vast number. Something like this uranium glassware, almost nothing. See? Much less. And we'll just switch back to counts per second again. Now let's take my hottest source of all, which is probably this guy right here. This is a 10 microcurie, if you like, 370 kilobecquerel cesium-137 source used to make barium-137M samples. This is the hottest. Let's put it back in dose-specific mode, make sure that's perfectly aligned. This is my hottest. 35, 34, 35 again, 36 microsieverts, 34 microsieverts. This is per hour. So that means that my fingers, right where I'm holding it, would be receiving around 35 to 36 microsieverts in a given full entire hour. That means I have to hold it like this in my hand for an hour. And you'll notice, by the way, let me turn this so you can see it get this back up again. There we go. So we're back up again. If we move it away just a little bit, just like two inches, that rating drops to 21. 13. My hand's not moving. 7. If we move it back just a little bit, what is that, six inches? It's going to drop down to probably under one. per hour. My point that I'm trying to make it here is that even though this is exposing my hand to 35 microsieverts per hour, and this is the worst one of all, by the way, it's, all my uh, sources that I have are almost exclusively under 10 microsieverts per hour. This is my worst. This is, this is the, the worst of all, the evil sample, the most powerful of them all. It's not even that much. It's a little dinky um, 10 microcarry sample. And look, look, look at this, surrounded by the samples. The samples are all within, like, within one foot. And it's got, got not getting very much. See? 10 counts per second, 1.6 microsieverts, which isn't accurate because some of these aren't even cesium-137. My point I'm trying to get to is that when I'm holding these samples, it is not exposing my body to all of this radiation. It's only exposing my hands or whatever is close to me. These dose rates you're, you're seeing are very small, and they're for an entire hour of exposure. I'm holding in my in my hand for seconds. Like, 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5, that's 5 seconds. My entire yearly exposure to this sample is probably under a minute and a half to 2 minutes. And I would need to hold it 30 times longer than that to even equal that one dose rate. 
When you fly an air on an airplane, you're going to receive dose rates that are 10 times higher than that full body from, from head to toe. So let's get a visual interpretation. I'm going to show you a ball that represents the size of this sample. And the sample is actually not 10 micro, I mean 10 microsieverts per hour. The sample is actually like 8 or something. But we're just going to jack it up to 10 to make it simple. So we're going to actually increase the dose a little bit. And we're going to show this as a little tiny ball. And then we're going to show it next to a ball that's bigger that represents other sorts of things. The dose of a dental x-ray is about 5 microsieverts. That's represented by the red ball. However, the dose by the majority of my small check sources is about 10 microsieverts per hour or less. It's represented by the blue ball. The dose of a chest x-ray is about 100 microsieverts. That's represented by the green ball. The dose of a CT chest scan averages about 7 thousand microsieverts. That's represented by the large orange ball. Notice how it dwarfs everything else. And now finally, the dose needed to be lethal to at least 50% of those exposed within 30 days is around 4 million microsieverts, and that's represented by the large green ball. Well, that was a little eye-opening, wasn't it? Not quite what you thought. Let's look at sound and the scariness of it. When I take a detector like this, this little CRM100, these, these sources don't sound very strong, do they? Let me go up against the most powerful one that I have. This is it. This is the Mac Daddy of my samples. As you can see, the big scary symbol in front of it and everything. It doesn't sound very radioactive when you compare it to something like this. Or even if we pull the beta shield off, it should be even worse. Suddenly, this sounds way more scary because of the sound. And you think, that's bad. Let's connect it to a scintillation counter. This is set to times uh, 100 mode. And in fact, let's set it to times 1,000. See just, how, just out of curiosity how high we get. We are nearly, what is it? We're at 410, 420,000 counts per minute. It sounds scary when you use those loud detectors like that. But you can't let the sound and, and knowing that it's radioactive scare you. You have to base things on the actual numbers and the real data. So yeah, holding this in my hand could give me cancer. In fact, one second of holding this could give me cancer. One second of it. But then again, consider driving in your car. What's the likelihood of dying? Actually, it's not that low. But you don't stop driving a car because of it. I don't expose myself to these all day long just because. I don't eat candies out of this, as I've seen people do before, by the way. I don't, you know, mess around with these things just for no reason. I do it for educational purposes to try to teach people stuff. And I am judging that to be a, a risk worth dealing with because it's so tiny. It's such a tiny, tiny risk. Um, but that's my own personal say on this. But even if you do or don't agree with my willingness to take that very incredibly ridiculously tiny risk that's smaller than even, like, you know, what, a chest x-ray, then we should at least consider this. This is not going to give me radiation sickness. This cannot. This dose right here cannot. If I swallowed this, which would be the stupidest possible thing I could ever do, it would not give me radiation sickness. There just is not enough in there to do it. By a humongous amount, there is not enough. There's also not enough for this to kill me outright from radiation. It can give you cancer, but I would say smoking is probably a worse thing to deal with than just holding this for a few seconds. And I think the numbers back me up there. So this is Tom from anti-proton.com. Um, I just wanted you to understand why. And no, my God, my hands, please leave the hands thing alone. Oh my God, his hands, people keep saying. My hands are white, right? Nice and pale color because I don't get enough sunlight. And I have psoriasis, which turns my skin kind of a reddish color on the tips. And the camera has like this weird uh, um, uh, issue with colors. It's, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but it just makes everything really, really bright. It's a contrast issue. So like, look at, look at the tips of my elbows. My elbows, look how red they are. And they never come in contact with any of, the, any of these samples. I've been like this since I was a child. 
It's psoriasis. Please, just go look it up. Don't, don't, don't freak out and think it's radiation. It's psoriasis. All right? Oh, my God. But anyway, this is Tom from anti-proton.com, and bye-bye.